All right, kind of doing a series of videos here. The last one I'm going to do for now, because my battery's going to die on my computer, is on Bitcoin. I'm going to put these into, you well, know, people that ask me about Bitcoins, and I'd heard their ads on Free Talk Live, and I just kind of thought, yeah, you know, gold and silver, that's kind of all it is for me. It sounds interesting. Um, but the first, the first, the, the, the kind of the really interesting economic question which I had seen Bob Murphy address is the regression theorem. The regression theorem was put out by Menger and Mises basically saying all money has to have started at one point as an actual commodity that was bartered and eventually became bartered for the sake of being useful in barter. Uh, if there's something that everybody can use then you tend to trade for that and then use that to get other, uh, let's not just go on I'm just assuming my subscribers know exactly what I'm talking about because I don't want to go through the whole thing anyway people say well Bitcoin it has no commodity value at all it's just data and so uh, doesn't this prove their 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 regression theorem wrong well it doesn't because it does have value first of all in order for a Bitcoin to be generated it takes time uh, and it also takes computing power and the energy required to do that, which is a small investment, but it is there and it does cost something. But what it's really useful for is communications. Uh, the ability to send specified data securely over long distances instantly is actually a useful thing. And that is exactly what a Bitcoin is. It's, it's, a, it's a string, it's a code that can be transmitted around the world you know free and it can't be counterfeited so it can't be reproduced and that that single bit can really be a trace of ownership and so it is it has a a function beyond its use in exchange albeit a mild one but then it it's data this is what's so interesting about it it's data that was uh created to mimic all the most desirable aspects of currency so it's divisible whatever uh, it is actually in hyperinflation right now because more than 10 hyperinflation is 10 percent per annum and there's more than 10 percent increase in bitcoins per year at least for right now and so it's actually in hyperinflation but uh, they had a panel of people who work for a company that deals in bitcoins um, they are paid in bitcoins they don't get paid in federal reserve notes uh, which to me is a pretty interesting indication that they believe it. The panel were all hardcore libertarians, like free staters. Uh, they knew their shit when it comes to Austrian economics and Austro libertarianism, and none of them created Bitcoin, the, the, unless the, the, they're the secret alias guy who did. Um, and they saw Bitcoin, and they saw its potential and became basically converts to its use and got involved in it and basically it's been a wet dream of crypto anarchists and crypto libertarians for a long time to have something that's you know impossible for the, or very difficult anyway cost prohibitively difficult cost wise for the government to regulate and control and that's what Bitcoin has the potential to be uh, I have reservations about it because we don't know who created it so who knows maybe it's all a plant and maybe the government can find a way to do something about it but honestly if it works the way that these com software engineer computer programmers believe which they earnestly do well let me just say this okay so Boston Tea Party is about becoming like a very strong martial like fighter to be really good with guns to be really good with knives to be a survivalist to be able to you know if, if if the armed goons come to his house many of them will die I have no doubt and Boston Tea Party wants to make people to be that way and he's written books about it and he is I mean there are people who model themselves after him and there's a whole ethos of that that um, you know in exists independent of Boston Tea Party so there's lots of like former and there are lots of former special forces guys at Porkfest but I was I was sitting at the panel of Bitcoin and looking up on stage and they had I think five guys, young guys, nerds, you know, wearing nicely pressed shirts who are probably never shoot guns ever. 
and I was thinking, those guys up there are involved in something that is literally an existential threat to the government. Something that could, hypothetically, I'm not predicting this, but hypothetically could destroy the government. Because within Bitcoin, is a possibility, or something like Bitcoin anyway, if not specifically Bitcoin, is a possibility, I think the practically real, if not already realized possibility, of a currency that is completely beyond state control, which means commerce beyond state control and the death of taxes. That's fucking amazing. Now, that may not be the case in, with Bitcoin, but it appears that it, at the very least is possible. Uh, and I have some reservations about Bitcoin. Like I said, I'm not that computer savvy, so it is sometimes difficult for me to judge uh, the relevancy or the advocacy of, of computer-oriented things. I have a couple of resources I'm going to be checking into and reading more about. I'm going to educate myself. Um, these guys are hardcore libertarians. Uh, they don't really have anything explicitly to gain by what they're doing. Well, they, they get paid. The fact that they get paid in Bitcoins, I found very convincing because when we were watching the lecture, I was thinking, yeah, yeah, Bitcoins are great, but what does your company pay you in dollars, right? And it's like, no, they actually get paid in Bitcoins. So uh, I am provisionally investing in them. I went and bought about $100 worth, and I'm going to buy more next time I get paid. It's still not going to replace gold and silver. But here's the really interesting thing. So I bought $100 worth of Bitcoins, and I had 100 in cash, and then I actually just had some loose change. And the thing is, they're infinitely divisible, so you don't have to buy 8 Bitcoin. You can buy 0 .0839 Bitcoins. Um, he showed me the website where you can take your Bitcoins, and you can convert them into any currency. Dollars, euros, yen, anything. So... My hundred dollars in bitcoins, they're like stem cell money. You know, a stem cell can become any kind of cell. A bitcoin can become any kind of money, anytime, anywhere, for free. I can use my cell phone. I even got bitcoin apps and and just, oh, I want euros, I want yen. To me, that's pretty cool. That's going to be a nice thing to have. Now, bitcoins might end up being coming worthless someday, and so I would have lost all that money, which is why I'm only in them provisionally. However, if the dollar collapses, right now the demand for Bitcoin is pretty low. It's it's pretty low, and yet they still they're about six. They're more than six dollars for a Bitcoin. Um, the demand is practically nothing compared to what it was. And this, listen, this is going to be a divide here. All right, this is going to verge into libertarian fantasy land. The potential exists, and I would not put odds on it, but I don't think it's remote. I think it's something that could very likely happen, or not very likely, has a, a very decent chance of happening, that Bitcoin could become a new currency. I mean, like a major, majorly important currency for international transactions, although use of it domestically does exist and is potential. The, dem the, the supply of Bitcoins um, is limited. I know it's digital, but within the program, it has within itself basically an inability. It will, it will inflate to 20,999,999 Bitcoins, and that's it, based on a program. And I don't know what the time period is, but that's the maximum. The demand, I think, could literally increase 100,000 times. And it's not hyperbole, 100,000 times. If that happens, which I, I'm not saying that it will, but if that did, I, for $100, would become a many-time multi-millionaire. Some other YouTube users I met would become richer than the Rothschilds. Um, basically, <laughs> the people who own Bitcoin now are primarily a majority libertarians, especially anarcho-capitalists. It is plausible that we could literally end up in a scenario where like libertarians become financially the ultimate force in the world. Now, 
I preface this, that's kind of like wishful thinking, sort of, but it is actually possible. And that potential, albeit uncertain potential, uh, I found very, very alluring. Now, when you invest, you don't want to be swayed by emotion like that. And that's why I didn't empty out my entire wallet or exchange the silver. I mean, I brought a ton of silver with the pork fist. I'm like, I'm not changing that. Where you could, I could have brought them silver and bought bitcoins. Hell, they had a vending machine at, at Porkfest that did that. Um, I'm not going to do that. But I am going to look more into it, and I am going to invest more into it. I'm thinking a few hundred dollars every paycheck. Uh, something along those lines. Uh, maybe it will become a waste. I, I totally acknowledge that possibility. But uh, right now it's not. It's kind of cool that I have the option to get other currencies without any exchange, I mean, through, without any, you know, $8 a trade, any of that, and uh, over my phone, and uh, I'm very, very tempted by that, and I just, I remember the Tannenhill saying, you know, the government is really slow on the uptake, they are very, they have very high time preference, and so Bitcoin, I really think, has the potential, if not itself, a system like it, to literally destroy the government. But the government is aware of Bitcoin, and they look at it as, oh, maybe some drug dealers will launder money, maybe some people will tax evade. So, it's, and it was so weird, because I'm like, there's Boston Tea Party with all these guns, and in the end, like, this information stuff has so much more potential. But then the guys who do it are just a bunch of nerds. And so I was thinking, man, I think I think they should all move to Wyoming and be guarded by Boston Tea Party or some group of heavily armed uh, libertarians or something. Uh, and with the two... Boston Tea Party, by the way, agrees with, like, crypto anarchism and codes and all that stuff, too. But, I mean, he has a number of books on it. But it was a, kind of a weird experience because I'm sitting there and, you know, there are these cute-looking nerds up there. Most of them were cute. And... I just was like, this could be fucking it, like, or something like this, if not Bitcoin. And there are the, there are competitors competitors with Bitcoin that are essentially the same thing, although none of them have been as, that successful. And so, I have some issues with it, but they're relatively minor. Uh, my endorsement is provisional; it is with qualification. Um, and so, I wouldn't. If you're really poor, I don't think you should be buying Bitcoins. But that's the thing; is it's infinitely divisible. You know how you can buy. A dime of silver, but you can buy a penny of Bitcoin. So it's not like you need to uh, have seventeen hundred dollars to buy uh, an ounce of gold. You just can get into the market very, you know, not very much. And I think it would be so fucking awesome. Not only if I became wealthy because of it, but I mean, I just I know I know libertarians who are not super wealthy, but who have been getting into it for a long time in a big way, and they could, I'm not exaggerating, become richer than the Rockefellers or the Rothschilds. If Bitcoin got to half the status that the dollar has right now, that's what would be what happened. That, that would be the, the, the result. Uh, that's pretty incredible. So, uh, yeah, Bitcoin's... Uh, Bitcoins are extremely interesting and they're worth people's uh, attention. So that's it.